here it is. It's so cute. It's a milk truck. It doesn't run yet, but Ron's gonna get it to run for sure. It's adorable. Here's the auction winner in the flesh. Here's the milk truck. It's tiny and adorable. We're gonna have an ice cream truck. This swivels. It's got pedals right here for, for when you're standing. You can drive while standing. And when you're sitting, there's pedals up here, but one of the pedals is broken. So Ron will fix it. 1955 Divco. In the process of starting it after it's been sitting for years. We're not gonna worry about getting making sure it has a bunch of water or anything right now just get it started run for 10 seconds and shut it off that'll tell us a lot um so i'll remove the wiring that's there hook up what i need get a battery put in here and uh turn it over see if we've got spark and then hook up the gas and and see if the carburetor is going to work one system at a time. Yeah, the master cylinder is not hooked to the brake lines either. Up here. Wasp nest inside the brake line. Oh god. That's so how much oil was in it. Oh, no. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> well, I think we can hold off on putting oil in right now. I think the next thing is to strip it to its bare bones wiring. 1955 Divco. That's way to get fixed. And I open it up here and it's dribbling out. Yeah? It's still stinky. So Old gas that that's not going to. You don't want to try to spray the carburetor with uh, carb cleaner and while we're starting well, it? We can't really get to any of the parts that would be clogged. Mm. So far is that it turns over, no backfiring. It fires, runs for, oh, probably 10, 20, uh, Revolutions. It tells me that no valves are stuck because we've got no backfiring, no loud exhaust noises, um, which is great. That's one of the downsides with these flathead engines is you often end up with a valve stuck and they're hard to access and uh, trying to tap them back and forth to free them up. You bend the valve and then you end up needing a full valve job. So I'm very happy with it so far. Uh, the basic core engine seems good. So we're ready to give it a try again. Oh, yay. Here we go. Okay. That's so, let's see. Let's see. See where the intake is? Are you able to put your hand that where you've been trying to spray the oh, fuel? Can you close it. Hand over it. Ooh, that's strong. It sucks pretty good. Oh, yeah. it sucks real good. Did it? I think we're just going no Take. shortcut to it. We just need to pull the carburetor and clean it up a little bit. All right. Varnish gets dried in there. So, carb's coming off. We got the carburetor out. Getting the screws out so we can see what's going on in it. What's up? Fuel goes in there. And there should be... Off reasonably easily. Let's make sure there are no other screws. Nope. There we go. And now here's the float. It presses on a valve and the float goes up. It closes, stops 
fuel from coming in. When it starts using up fuel, goes down, fuel can come back in. Often it looks a fairly decent shape, but yeah. the gasket looks pretty new. Yeah, the whole thing looks like it's been redone that, that long ago. I take the float off, and here's the valve. So let's pull out this little jet here. Absolutely nothing. No possibility of anything getting through there. So we'll get some. Some stuff that's a lot cheaper than the spray stuff and really it just dissolves stuff very easily. So I'm going to toss that in. Sticky varnish. Second day working on the Divco. What first, Ron? Well, since we don't have any cylinders in the rear wheel, they're gone. And I'd like to take one of these wheels off first, see what else is gone. If there's anything else we need to order. Uh, I kind of think the brake shoes are still there. So it'll be just put the cylinders in, get things adjusted and put that back together. Yourself. There we go. That comes Very out. Be heavier. So yes, it has shoots. Oh, this man. is all rusty inside. We'll, we'll take a brush on the drill to take care of that. But the shoes have some life left in them. And there's where the cylinders are supposed to be. Let's well, see. So that's good news. See if the ones that came are right. And I'll we'll see. If you want to sponsor our channel, Ray Bestus. Please be correct. know exactly what style or engineering these brakes are but they're the simplest ones where to tighten them up you push them out and the pistons just catch up with them and push from there Newer Day three or four? Day, day. day four. Day four. Yeah. Okay. Day four. Yeah. Day one, we went over the wiring and such, got it running. Day two, getting started on the brakes. 
day three, a couple days ago, we went through the wiring. We did two sets of brakes. Yeah, we did. We did the back wheels. And found out we didn't have the kit. found out we didn't have the kit for that wheel. And then we also found out there was a lot more work to do on the clutch. What are we doing, Ron? Hit the clutch, and I'll show you that the shaft is not moving. So, we look down there. This is the shaft to the clutch right here. And you hit the pedal. The brake and the clutch should move, and that doesn't move one bit. And the pedal is jammed. So, clearly, we've either got rust where the shaft goes through, or the throw out is, has got its problems. So, we'll remove the inspection plate. Rusty as heck. And, oh, mouse nest. Oh, hi, you're so brave. Yeah, it's full of rust and mouse nest and whatever. Oh, that sets it back a ways. So how long do we contemplate before we just give up and drop the transmission, I suppose? Throw out bearing squeaks. Thought you found the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be removing all these bolts, take the drive shaft off and back, see if we're able to slide it back. It'll probably have to come back straight about six inches for the shaft to come out of the clutch and pilot bearing. And then if we can keep it at that level, that's great. Just strap it up, uh, and we should be able to. There's a skid plate underneath that is heavy. It can hold it up. But we're gonna have to remove all of the linkage here, and uh, emergency brake, etc. All of this linkage here and here needs to be disconnected and then readjust it once it's hooked up again. Here's my mouse nest. This is what's stuck. It should slide in and out nicely. It doesn't move at all. It's just rusted on the shaft, I'm sure. Bearings turns, but we'll replace it. The clutch plate is in here. I don't know how badly that's stuck to the pressure plate on the outside and the flywheel inside. Six bolts here and this will pop. Oh boy. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah, that's terrible. Pretty coated with rust that came off here. Take a look at that. That's, God, can that be fixed? Let's see how much they can clean off. Now it's time to take these six bolts off. All right, day four, I think, or five. Yeah, well, first off, we gotta clean out the bell housing of all this crap. It doesn't look like much grease, so I think we just sweep it out and then use a wire brush to loop, take the loose rust. But you got the parts okay? Yep, clutch is unlimited. They had some new old stock. What do, you, what do you call this thing? Clutch plate. All right, new old stock clutch plate. Excellent. And then... Pressure plate. Pressure plate. 
and then some bearings. Oh, and then here you go. Um, oh, that is so nice. Yes. So when, you can, you, when you're putting it together, you have to release the clutch, jiggle it around, try to move this thing up and down, line up the splines, everything else. This little plastic thing is great because it it has it lines it up. lines it all up, so you're not pushing it around, really getting uh, frustrated and potentially harming the uh, pilot bearing on the way. The clutch all back installed. Look at that, it looks freaking beautiful. Pumping the brakes. Well, we need to turn on the gas. Oh, no. Ooh, listen to that purr. Talk to you soon. <laughs> First time it's driven in a really long time. Turn it off, maybe? Let's double check. Yeah, it is hot. Thirsty. Hey, baby. Clutch is in the middle, or pretty, pretty far down? It's, it's real near the top. Oh, really? Yeah. And your emergency brake is on. Am I in the right gear? I think you are. It just doesn't have a lot of torque at low end. That's third. We started in second. Yeah. Wow, what a trip. It is. <laughs> Thanks for watching the story of getting the Divco running. Subscribe for more awesome car videos.